while temperatures drop from coast to coast in the United States, the town of Savu Savu in Fiji is actually approaching prime diving conditions, with fall bringing lower wind speeds that lend access to more remote locations in clearer waters. It's not the only season offering the cluster of volcanic islands north of New Zealand some street cred. When Survivor recently kicked off its 39th round of competitions in Fiji, host Jeff Probst admitted that he hopes to film there indefinitely. In fact, it was a combination of the show's lush landscapes and an affordable Airbnb called Pirate's Paradise that lured my husband and I to the couple's escape, where our unexpected proximity to the Jean-Michel Cousteau Dive Center turned a 10-day vacation into a lesson about underwater meditation and stress control. After we'd arrived in Savu Savu and settled into the Pirate's Pod House, our host Bruce Harbour, a friendly Australian turned local who even coordinating our airport pickup, instructed us that the Cousteau Resorts Dive Centre was just a five-minute stroll from our elevated hideaway. I could see the dock from our wraparound deck, and the concept of scuba diving suddenly intrigued me, I thought of a story my dad told about meeting Jean-Michel Cousteau on an expedition years ago, where they spent 10 days diving together and visited several Fijian islands on the trip. Decades later, the resort has become an ecolux mecca for underwater experiences thanks to an initiative to protect the surrounding Namina Reef, one of the most diverse and fish and coral on the planet. It also offers a range of beginner-level petty, professional association of diving instructors, certification courses that are open to all skill sets, even children. As I passed by Jean-Michel, who still leads underwater expeditions at 81, he was playing with a dog outside of the dive center, giving a friendly welcome to the guests joining his league of underwater ambassadors, trained on the grounds. Once a short instructional video screening wrapped in wetsuits, oxygen tanks, and goggles were provided, I was practicing inhaling and exhaling bottled oxygen with a local instructor in the resort's pool. An hour later, I was already dipping into the open ocean and watching colorful angelfish flip past blue sea stars attached to the coral below. What surprised me, though, was an absence of the underwater anxiety I'd expected to feel, mainly due to the slow, steady breathing techniques that are par for the course when scuba diving. I'm not alone in experiencing this unexpected calm. Since the moment I started diving, my stress levels changed, because I learned how to control my breathing under and above water, says Andy Fraser, who heads the dive center and even credits his certification for alleviating the heart palpitations he used to feel in the tense restaurant environment where he once worked. Now, he notices how the techniques he teaches have the ability to benefit daily life in all situations, as students learn to stay calm in new environments. Plus, scuba is a surprisingly inclusive physical activity that's accessible to people of varied levels of experience, body types, and abilities. People who have preconceptions of how difficult scuba diving will be are almost always surprised at how well they did, says Fraser. They emerge from the water extremely proud of themselves, and in many cases, their relationship and perception of the ocean is changed for life. After my initial lessons with Fraser, the next dive trips included deeper waters where I re-encountered paddling sea turtles and moray eels, lounging under rock canopies on the sandy ocean floor. Silent communication like, OK, hand signals and a thumbs up for when it's time to surface were all the human interaction necessary, so the deep, slow breaths with oceanic views translated quickly into a meditative underwater experience, and one that wellness experts are quick to reinforce.